it's the middle of February and we've had a cold snap for quite a while. This into March is the most difficult period of time for the white-tailed deer in its northern reaches. And the temptation is out there for everyone to try to feed deer, to get them through those extra couple of months. Most people are well-meaning in doing this, and so they put a big pile of corn out there. But the data shows from scientific research, this can be really detrimental to deer. In fact, it can kill them almost instantly. And so here is a way that you can naturally provide food for deer that is not one bit harmful to them. If you've spent any time watching whitetails, whether from a tree stand or from the ground or just driving along the road, you know that deer love apples. And the great thing about apples is that depending upon the tree type, it can drop its fruit anywhere from late July all the way through, well, in some cases, they're still hanging on trees here in the middle of February in western New York. Oftentimes, deer will actually go to apple trees before they go to food plots because they love the taste of apples so much. What gets less press regarding deer and their association with apple trees is the importance of apple tree browse for the deer. They absolutely cherish the taste of the new growth, the woody tips. If you ever take a twig, and I challenge you to do this, break it off, a fresh grown twig, and chew on the end of it. Don't swallow it, just chew on it. You'll notice that the juice found inside the twig actually tastes kind of sweet. It tastes a lot like an apple. And so there's a reason why deer are drawn to apple trees, not only for the fruit, but also to browse them. This time of year, it's the middle of February, we're having the coldest temperatures we've had all year, it's supposed to get down to zero degrees tonight. The deer have browsed almost all of the new growth that is at a height they can reach. And so something that you can do that will kill two birds with one stone in an old orchard like this, where the trees are way overgrown and haven't seen a pruning shears for decades, is to cut just a couple of branches off of the tree, which won't set it back tremendously for this next growing season, but it will begin to thin out the tree so that sunlight can produce a good crop. And at the same time, right now, you can produce browse at a height that deer can reach. When it comes to cutting back branches and pruning a fruit tree, an apple tree in this instance, it's really important that you don't take more than 25% of the branches off of the tree in any one year. If you do remove more than this, it stimulates a message to the root system of the tree that something is wrong up top. And so it will send all kinds of energy into growing new vegetation to replace that which has been removed. So for today, I'm going to focus on removing just a couple of branches on this tree. And I'm going to look specifically for two types of branches that aren't good for a healthy tree. Vertical branches, because they don't bear very much fruit, and also any branches that grow back in toward the center, toward the trunk because they have a tendency to block sunlight and you want the center of your tree ultimately to be opened up to sunlight. That's what produces fruit. Any branch that's bigger than what you can hold without any straining should be cut several inches away from the trunk that you're cutting it from, whether it's the main trunk or a branch. You can see in this case with my shears there that it's about two inches in diameter. And then once that weight is removed and the branch is taken off, I can come in and make a nice smooth flush cut close to the branch. So I cut down about five tree branches. And I've laid them out here kind of in a row. And I'd almost be willing to bet, although this part of the property is not getting used this time of year very much, that within 12 hours, I just about guarantee there'll be deer in here browsing on these freshly cut branches. 
And let's test that hypothesis. I'm going to hang a trio camera. So we're all set up with the trail camera here and uh, I'll check it in a couple of days, see if we have any action here. About a week after I cut those apple branches down, I had a chance to go back to the property and check out my trail camera and see what was going on. The first thing that I noticed was that there was a prominent bed right at the base of that tree that I had trimmed those branches from. I also observed that the deer had been working over those freshly cut branches. I couldn't find a single tip that hadn't been chewed off. They had browsed it completely. The buds, including the fruiting buds, and the new growth from last year. And though my trail camera malfunctioned and distorted almost all of the pictures with those jumbles of different colors and bars and pixelations, I was able to discover that there were deer in there eating three hours after I left the property that night. And for some reason, I was able to get a series of about 12 or 15 videos of this little buck chowing down on the fresh vegetation that was now at his height where he could reach. One final thought, maybe you don't have fruit trees on your property. You can do the same thing with other kinds of trees, especially species such as red maples or ash or other trees that have vegetation that grows really quickly. Deer tend to key in on those species. So you can cut some branches off and that is good browse for the deer to be able to get themselves through the winter without causing problems with their digestive system. As always, I'm Daryl Meyer with Seeds to Dreams Deer, and I hope you find more than you think you're hunting for.